Hello, welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and I'm going to do a vlog this week for my A to Z Horror Reading Challenge. And this challenge was created by John at Books of Blood, and he created um, a number of alphabetical prompts for readers to choose horror stories from. And the first prompt is A is for Apocalypse. Read a story about an apocalypse. And I have chosen The Immortals by Martin Amos. Now this is a short story that is not usually counted as a horror story, but I'm gonna say it is a horror story because it is about life after a nuclear war. And in this story, it is narrated by a being who calls himself sort of a failed god. He has been around on Earth when the continents were all one and planets had not yet emerged. And he has watched the rise and fall of civilizations. And um, in 2049, there is a huge conflict coming and he decides he wants to witness it from Tokyo, which he assumes is going to be blown into oblivion. And it is blown into oblivion, but he survives and he makes it down to New Zealand after many years where all the citizens are suffering from the horrors of nuclear war. There is disease, there is famine. Everything that you can imagine bad that happens in nuclear war is happening. And I grew up in the 80s and I felt that horror of nuclear war and the utter doom that it could happen to us, that everything we did, all our great achievements would come to naught. And this is what makes it a horror story because he, he, he hammers home just the great things that humanity has accomplished and we blew it all up. Now, many people don't consider nuclear war a great threat again, although um, a little man in Russia called Putin might be bringing that back. But we have other apocalypses that can destroy our world. We have global climate change, and we are not learning the follies of our ways to prevent the horror of destruction. I can highly recommend this story. It, yeah, I said again, it's technically not a horror story, and it does have a little trick ending, but it is a short story about what we do to ourselves and how miserable we can make our lives. B is for body horror. And something about the body goes terribly wrong to a protagonist or a different character. And the story that I picked out for this is an all-time classic. It is The Fly by George Langalong. And um, you will have to find this story in an anthology somewhere, I believe. I have two copies. One in Alfred Hitchcock Presents Stories for Late at Night. Or The Ghouls, edited by Peter Henning. And um, you'll just have to search and find a copy. Now, this is the story of a man who receives a phone call late at night from his sister-in-law, claiming that she has just killed his brother and she needs him to summon the police to come arrest her. And it goes on and she has murdered him, or should I say, the body has been killed in a most gruesome fashion. It has been crushed crushed in a steam press. Now, people familiar with the movies will know sort of what this story is about. Um, the original movie with Vincent Price is much closer to the original story than the more modern David Cronenberg film. And of course, this is a story of a man who has invented a teleportation device and a fly gets in when he's experimenting on himself and parts of his body are exchanged with those of a fly. And um, I found this story quite entertaining and gripping, even though I knew the story. 
There is, however, a twist in the short story that um, does not exist in the films. There is an incident in the Vincent Price version, and it's just an incident, and then that incident is forgotten. But in the short story, it comes back with a vengeance, and it is actually a pivotal part of the story because it makes a final decision for the characters, an inescapable decision. I won't tell you what that event is because um, you'll have to read it for yourself. Um, still, I think The Fly is a magnificent short story about the body in rebellion because the body of the scientist becomes something that he does not own himself. C is for creepy kid. And I read two stories for this letter. They come from the Science Fiction Hall of Fame, Volume 1. But these can be considered horror stories. The first is It's a Good Life by Jerome Bixby. Now, this was um, famously turned into a Twilight Zone episode starring that kid from Lost in Space, Bill something or another. And it is the story of a town that is separated from the rest of the world. Or maybe there is no more rest of the world because this kid can do anything he wants and the people of the town are absolutely terrified to please him and make him happy because if he's not happy with you, he does bad things to you. And then, if you're lucky, you get sent to the cornfield, which is um, just a euphemism for death. And it's the interaction between these parents, these adults, and this kid who is just a kid who may not know the sheer terror that he is causing everyone. So why do people are afraid of him? Because he's all powerful. He is like a god. Maybe this kid is God in this story. And the second story I read is um, Born of Man and Woman by Richard Matheson. And this is just a little four page story narrated from a child's point of view. Not quite sure how old this child is. This child is not normal. It lives chained up in a basement and it drips green stuff. The parents don't like the dripping green stuff and they punish this child. They are mean to this child and the child does not like that. And there is elements that this child can do more than it's been doing. It can pull its chains from the wall. So why do these parents fear their children so much? I'm drawing back to, to Frankenstein, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, where the monster just wanted to be accepted. So what would happen to the all-powerful kid in its good life if the parents just loved their child instead of feared their child and placated their child? What if the parents of this dripping thing in Born of Man and Woman accepted their child for what it was? Would they be the monsters that they are? Perhaps not. Just like Mary Shelley's monster in Frankenstein. And what do parents and adults do to some kids nowadays who have differing ways? They treat them like they're something rotten, that they should be legislated out of existence. Well, those kids turn into monsters, like the monsters in these short stories who don't need to be monsters. When the darkness loves us, 
by Elizabeth Angstrom. This is a novella. It is about a 16-year-old girl, newly married, fascinated with sex with her husband, and she's exploring the property that her husband owns, which is a junction to her own family's property. And she knows that there is an old slave hideout where the slaves used to hide until they thought they could escape. And she decides to explore this ancient hideaway. And why she's exploring this, she discovers a hole in one of the walls, which leads to an underground cavern. And she knew about this cavern from when she was a little girl. And she used to hide her little girl toys. And she wants to explore to see if they're still there. And yes, there is an old spoon that she used to play with as a little girl. And she picks it up and she's fascinated with it. But as she is examining the spoon, her husband comes to the door of this underground place and he locks it saying, I don't want my children to get trapped in this place. But he traps his wife and she's in darkness and there is nothing that she can see because it is completely dark. And she explores the cavern and she comes to a lake and she is sure that there is a lake monster in this underground cavern and she flees deeper into the caverns and she does not want to go back to the monster and she starts living underground but she is also pregnant and she gives birth to a son and a ghost of an old relation comes to help her and tells her how to find food in this underground, completely dark environment. And that mostly consists of slugs. And she gives birth to her son in complete darkness. And she raises her son in complete darkness. And what she thinks is only a few years is 20 years until she becomes determined to find an exit from this underground cavern. Now this, this novella has some problems to it. Some of the incidents just do not jive with reality, but it is so fascinating and extreme think about this 16 year old girl giving birth in an underground cavern all alone and raising her child and talking to her child and creating this little, this little tiny community of herself and her son. But when she escapes, things are going to get more extreme. I really like this book. This was a reread for me. And as I said, there are some issues that just, just don't make total sense. But um, if you can look over them, this is just such a fascinating read because the darkness loves Sally Ann and her son.